So welcome to this session, uh, an, an annotation jam session, adding meaning, examples, discussion to the UNESCO recommendation on OER, with uh, great thanks to Alan for joining us very, very early where he is. Um, it's around 4 a.m. I think. So thank you very much, Alan, for joining us. I think this is going to be a really interesting session um, and I will hand over to Alan. Okay, thank you very much. It's, it's really great to be here. Um, hello and welcome. This is uh, going to be a uh, highly interactive session. So I put a link in the chat more or less everything that I'm going to show um, is coming from uh, a press book where we have um, imported the UNESCO OER recommendation. Uh, definitely not required that you know any expertise about this, but um, I just mm -hmm. wanted to um, to give everyone a chance to sort of uh, have a hands-on uh, experience with this project that I've been trying to get rolling. So. Um, first of all, and thanks again to Carrie for setting things up quite nicely. Um, I just want to find out like what people's experience is with uh, web annotation, especially with hypothesis. It doesn't matter if you've never done it before. Um, it's going to be really easy. And I will try to walk through things uh, very quickly uh, because what I really want to do is um, give everyone a chance to do this uh, while we're in the same room together. So um, for uh, the people in the audience, if you can let me know through chat, um, just uh, if you have any um, uh, experience or questions about doing this, it doesn't matter. You can certainly watch along as I go through and demonstrate. Um, but pretty much everything I'm going to um, do is um, shared at the URL that I, I've put into the chat. And uh, I guess I'll just walk through um, and uh, start. So, um, so yeah, some people have uh, heard about it. Um, that's pretty good. Um, it, it's quite interesting um, in many ways because uh, I remember when, uh, when I first started on the web way back in the ancient pre-Cambrian era, um, the first Mosaic Brower, browser actually had um, annotation features built in there. And so the idea that you have a space to record and share notes on anything on the web has always been compelling. But I'm going to go now, get to the action. Um, let me know, please, by um, audio um, or uh, flag carry if uh, you have a question or I'm going too fast or I've um, done something ridiculous because um, as I share, um, my uh, window here, I will probably uh, lose uh, sight of the chat. So here we go. Um, I'm going into uh, this, this actually in the middle of this press book. I will uh, sort of give an overview of this, but um, I decided to call this um, an annotation jam. Uh, I like the musical references, especially for my, my friend uh, Chihira, but the idea that um, uh, people get together and sort of do things in the same space has sort of always appealed to me um, as, as an approach um, for, for teaching, um, et cetera. So it seems a lot more fun than listening to uh, me blab as I'm doing right now. So um, yes, uh, there is this document, <laughs> the UNESCO recommendation on OER. I am not going to give a history of this, et cetera, but it was many years in the making. It's an official document. It's pretty high level, but it's rather important to the work that we do. Um, and so when you, um, you know, actually look at this um, document, of course, um, it, is, uh, it is pretty general because it has to apply to the whole world. And so uh, being clever, actually trying to be clever, um, this is a screenshot from it. And I've actually annotated itself by, you know, we do this very often when we're uh, teaching, especially online, we draw attention to materials or things that we want to um, get people to think about, or maybe we want to give instructions to. Um, so this is a form of annotation. But you know, typically with a document, you know, you have the ability to read it. That's what we can do uh, with a document. But sort of as this became a framework for some work that we've been doing in Open Education Global. Um, I started trying to imagine like. What if, you know, you had the ability 
um, to actually go into very specific words, phrases um, in this document and um, share examples. Like um, I, I, I'm not familiar with what policy environments are, what examples are, or what if we can ask questions about, you know, why does it talk about, um, what does it mean effective OER practices? Who does, defines what effective is? So annotation can serve many purposes, um, but in many ways it allows you to sort of um, contribute to the document, but you can also interrogate it. You can ask questions, you can be in discussion, and that's what I saw as potential um, for what we could do with this document. Um, I'm not gonna give the history of annotation, but it's been around a long time. We've done it all along in our academic careers. We make notes in the margins, we highlight. Um, there's many forms of annotation that um, uh, my good colleague, um, and I, I definitely recommend um, anything um, by Ramey Kalir, who's a, a real ac a scholar on um, annotation and its uses. Um, he and uh, Antero Garcia have co-authored a book published last year um, called Annotation. And um, the particular um, tool that you're going to be exposed to um, in this thing called Hypothesis allows annotation um, to be happening uh, right in the screen. And so um, it's actually um, enabled right on this very uh, screen that we're looking at. And I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But um, right here, as I flip that little button in my top right, um, it brings over this toolbar, which is where I'm able to do annotation. So um, if you're looking at this right now, um, if you have, um, if you've never used Hypothesis, you can actually sign up and create your account here. Or look, I haven't been in for a while, so I can just log in right away. Um, and now I am logged in to uh, my hypothesis. And so um, there's a note here and there's a picture and a video of a penguin. So these are things that we can do. So um, in terms of uh, the way you can interact with this um, on any web page, but it's enabled here in Pressbooks as a feature is um, I can always hide it and go back to my reading and we'll get into the nuts and bolts and um, do this. But um, one thing that is very powerful about this being um, web-based annotation is it, it helps you. So it, it's a way, if you're doing this as a regular basis, um, I've done many classes where I really encourage my students to do this um, because traditionally you've got like articles that you've printed on a stack of paper, you've like highlighted them, marked them up, you notes, um, but they're all distributed. You can't really access them because they're on paper or in books and you have to remember where they are or summarize your notes. So, um, but because this is on the web, um, there are ways that the system can sort of track um, what one person has done. So <clears throat> this is looking at one particular strange user's account and this has all the annotation activity that this person has ever done um, across any document. And that's kind of interesting because you can also use tags to organize things. So um, you can do things like this example, um, and I'm kind of leaping into an advanced feature, but um, this is showing the same person's account, but just their activity on annotating this particular document that we're in right now. And so if you click any of these, um, you can come in and see um, the actual notes that this person has done. So it tracks um, in a good way the things that you've done um, in your annotation activity. And to me, this is like an incredibly useful um, as an academic, as a scholar. Um, if you do it on a regular basis, it allows you to sort of have your, your notes and your references organized in a way that you can come back to um, and find layers. So um, that's enough blabbing about this. So again, um, I've already kind of covered this. So um, annotation, um, in this case, um, this site is set up that we can automatically enable it. Um, generally, um, if you're using Hypothesis and you've created an account, there are several tools you can use that allow you to annotate anything on the web, whether the site owner has enabled it or not. So anything at a public URL, including PDFs, can be annotated with this method. But the key is this button in the top right, this little annotation drawer. So um, and, and again, I have seeded this with a few annotations. So again, um, some people are maybe already you know, figuring out that they have um, an account and they could log in 
Um, others of you are probably trying to say, wait a minute, I'm creating my account. I'm trying to log in. Alan's talking too fast. Um, but you can, um, I just want to give a sense about some of the things that you do sort of in an annotation um, activity. So um, one of them is, um, and if you've already scrolled up and down the page, you might have seen there's a few annotations already. So one thing you can do is look for things that other people have made notes on. And if I skip this over, this is a key feature. This annotation is in a public space. So our ability to, to do group annotation on this same document. So I already set up a button and I said, are you ready to annotate? So one thing that you can do is, okay, there's this existing annotation. I sort of set up a greeting um, and I can reply to it. And I can say like, um, I am ready to go, but Alan is going way too fast. And well, hopefully you might add um, something more relevant. Um, I'm encouraging you, not certainly not requirement, but if everybody tags things done in their workshop, OER 22, um, you can actually see all those annotations grouped together. And so this is basically, this is like commenting on a website. This is like replying in social media. So um, we can actually have discussion about something um, in this UNESCO OER uh, recommendation right in the page. Um, the, the other one um, is thinking about, and what I love about um, Ramey and Antonio's, uh, Antero's book on annotation is they, they give a lot of examples of things that are um, annotation um, in everyday life, like a family recipe. Like often we have these cards. Um, I have recipes that my mother or my grandmother gave me, um, but I put notes in them sometimes because I say like, well, you know, mom, you didn't use enough garlic, or um, I think this needs, you know, baking powder instead of baking soda. So that's an everyday annotation activity. Um, and even um, uh, Ramey argues that meme images, putting text on an image is an act of annotation. So um, you can look at something and if the words speak to you, um, I could say like, I could highlight this. And this is when you see a phrase that you wanna add a new annotation to going to bring this up I'm going to click annotate and we'll say um, um, I have uh, many of these recipes um, where I have added notes um, if I was more clever I might have had a link uh, to maybe a Flickr photo of mine um, you can uh, you can do some basic formatting of, of your um, I could make this italic obviously um, and you can add a link uh, to this, uh, any URLs you put in here. Um, for those interested um, in science and math, it does include um, LaTeX. So for people who are teaching um, uh, mathematics concepts, um, you can give um, like examples or things that you want your students to do in LaTeX. Uh, I can barely speak English, much less LaTeX, so I can't give an example. And you can insert images um, if you know where their, their link is. But um, for right now, I'm just going to uh, add an annotation here, and you can see that I've added something new that's in in yellow right now. So this exists. Um, another interesting piece about this activity, every one of these, I'll go back to this one, and um, I hope everybody's okay. I'm not really, can't really see what's going on in the other window. How are we doing, Carrie? Anybody? See, I can just talk on and blab forever. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, everybody's doing okay and not too lost as I am quickly talking because you you're, know the thing about you're doing great. presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, you, sometimes you feel like you're talking to a void and you know, I'm, I, I could be great at blabbing, but yeah. So um Thank you. A key feature to this is that every annotation that exists in this document, um, you can click um, this and it has a link. So everything that you do as an annotation activity is referenceable at a URL. So you can copy that. Um, you can put together a series of links. You can send out an invitation uh, to people to annotate. So if you said, if you wanted to like, um, I could um, bring this one up and I could 
uh, copy that link and I could go over Discord and say like, Alan's doing this crazy bleep in annotation and we're all annotating on this thing, uh, et cetera. Um, you may not see updates in real time. Um, I think you might have to, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so thank you, uh, my friends, for, for joining in the, the annotation into the activity. So, um, uh, so you can say it's almost like um, like a living discussion board around this document. So I may just uh, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna come back here and uh, just come in and make sure uh, people are people are alive. Okay, found your hypothesis password. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. There's importance to add pen you gifts and, and like I'm I'm really pleased that they thought of uh, adding animated gifts as a thing that people would want to annotate with. It certainly could uh, spice things up. Um, so I'm seeing, uh, yeah, uh, Leo's describing it as um, um, bringing discussion to a thing. Um, one of the things is like thinking about it, um, and, and I've had the great fortune to uh, do a lot of sessions and conversations with Ramey. He's such a great um, explainer of this in a way that makes sense. And so uh, my way of thinking about it is like the thing that you may want to put in an annotation, it's like a post-it note. It's pretty small. It's not like writing a, a treatise. Um, and it, it can be as simple as adding a link or a comment. Um, and you can certainly uh, go farther if you want to. So now I'm going to uh, get into this thing that we're doing with this OER recommendation. Um, so I've been working for about a year and a half with Open Education Global. And uh, the 2021 uh, conference um, that we held was online in September. And it was um, all uh, themed around the implementation of the UNESCO OER recommendation, which, of course, is this broad statement about what open educational resources should and can do and what member states um, should do to encourage it. And it defines these um, five action areas um, of Let's see, quiz me if I remember them. Building capacity, developing supportive policy. policy. Uh, there is um, creating accessible and um, equitable OER. Uh, there is sustainable OER and there's international um, cooperation. And again, these are really quite broad and each one of these recommendations has several sub items. And so um, the OE Global Conference um, had presentations, Leo was there, Chahira was there, I believe, um, where all the presentations and discussions were built around uh, discussions of examples of things or things that would be needed uh, to make the recommendation come to life, to be implemented. And so uh, one of the ideas that we had, because um, the upcoming OE Global Conference in person in Nantes uh, next month also is built around the OER recommendation is um, we had the idea, um, or <coughs> I had the idea that we could use this annotation to do things during the conference in between to ask presenters or people participating in the conference to take things that they heard in sessions um, or came across as references or things from their own work and attach it to this document and sort of fill it with things that sort of have those ability to add meaning uh, to particular phrases and, and words in this. So um, I've been trying over the last couple of months. Uh, we've run a bunch of asynchronous activities. I call them three days of focus, where we've um, done um, ask like a call to action to have people annotate the building capacity um, action area. And so we've been trying just to keep kind of a, a pulse on this activity and doing things like presenting at conferences um, uh, to show this. So an interesting thing, and you know, people have some experience using um, a hypothesis, and, and we'll get into actually what we're doing with the recommendation first. But um, my colleague, Grammy, who I've mentioned a lot, had developed with a, a colleague at University um, of Colorado, Denver, um, Francisco Perez. They developed this thing called, um, I forget what the acronym stands for, crowd layers. but it's a way of creating a visualization about um, the annotation activity on one specific document. So if you're doing something um, in 
um, having your students do an annotation or if you're working on a project where it's part of it, this is a way to sort of see activity of it in sort of a visual way. And so I think it's pretty interesting. And so um, they actually um, created um, something that combines um, several of the annotations that are part of this project. So uh, you have the ability to see here um, the annotation um, across, and you can see that there's um, ones that have happened relatively recently um, across um, several pages within this document. Um, so you can see the annotation. It also gives you a sense about who's participating. So um, me, I'm kind of a loudmouth with the annotation. I've done a lot, um, but if you're teaching with this, this is a way, um, not necessarily to, to check up on your students, but sort of be able to visualize what the activity is. Um, we have um, organized the different versions of the OER recommendation into different language versions. So in this way, we can see the annotation activity on separate documents. Um, and so I just think this is a really fascinating tool that I want people to know about um, that's available. So if you are um, doing anything um, with um, annotation, um, you actually put in the URL where your annotation um, activity is happening, and it'll generate a link that brings up this data for one particular annotation document. Uh, so incredibly powerful, free to use. So if anything with annotation, I definitely recommend the crowd layers. I heard something dingle, but <laughs> anyhow. Um, so again, what I'm trying to uh, call attention to, um, I had fun making a remix, encouraging people with the uh, remix of um, the old war posters in, in the US. This was originally Rosie the Riveter. Um, I, I rebranded her as Rosa the Annotator. And so a call to action to people um, to do some annotation. Um, and so I've been kind of pumping this um, for the last couple of months. And so what I'm thinking that we can do maybe in this session is um, get some of you uh, coming in and doing some um, annotation around one of the particular action areas, but actually I don't care where you annotate, you're welcome to do it um, anywhere um, in this um, this document, and is to um, uh, sort of think about some of the wording and some of the things in the inclusive and equitable OER action area, because you can have questions like, what does it mean to be inclusive and equitable with OER, and how do you know it is, and what are the examples of it? So um, I, I'm gonna jump into this um, with, I have a direct link that will take us there, um, but again, just to remind you, um, there's different ways you can go about approaching. Um, you can look for annotations that exist there and add on to them. That's definitely highly valuable. Um, if you, from your own work, if you say like, well, I'm doing this great project or I'm working on this paper, or I've read these three research papers um, that I know are probably relevant um, to this action area. Um, so if you have something you know that you think should be attached to um, this recommendation. That's the other way you can do it. And the other way is like you just read the thing and you start to look at it to think about um, what um, draws your attention. So the link I gave brings you right to this action area of the UNESCO OER recommendation. And so um, there are already um, links here. So, you know, it talks about, you know, the things that we're talking about in terms of um, uh, ways we want to address um, uh, equity. And so across, you know, so you can actually, if you want to go in and sort of, um, if you know something or have a question or want to comment about um, something that maybe about, um, we have a lot of things going on um, in this conference about um, indigenous ways of learning. So you can actually add um, a new note here to talk about the different places or ways that we want to think about uh, people who need um, uh, access to equitable OER. And, and so this is quite a, a detailed statement. And so you can look in a very specific word. Um, obviously, with things going on um, in the Ukraine right now, there's a lot of things going on with important um, activities on refugee education, uh, displaced persons a lot broader. Um, and so you can zero in on the general. But um, we also may want to talk about um, things under very specific um, these sub items within. Um, so um, obviously there's a lot of emphasis uh, important 
with going on about access to OER. So um, anything that might be an example that talks about um, learners who, um, the way OER is meeting learners who um, uh, don't have the, the financial access to and so many of the work that we're doing and talking about here um, can go in. Um, one of my interesting things that I'm really interested in are some of the technology platforms that allow people in places of no internet or very weak internet to be able to use OER and use OELI, OER resources. And I'm sure there's a lot of things uh, people at this conference can contribute to that. Um, we can think about um, next one, um, uh, OER um, examples of things that address um, uh, gender sensitive uh, OER and culturally sensitive OER. So, um, and obviously um, ling linguistically relevant OER um, which again, this person named Alan probably added in here um, some time ago. So the thing with um, looking at um, this document is it's, to me, it works better if you really focus in on something very specific, like a word or a phrase, um, but there's no rules for that. So sometimes people want to, you know, highlight this whole chunk and talk about, you know, I know some work going on um, with evidence-based standards and some research going on. So um, when you look at, you know, the document, you can see like, well, there's been some activity and it gets darker if there's more you know, notes on something. Um, so you get a sense about um, things that have gotten attention and things that haven't got attention. So that's another sort of approach um, for thinking about jumping into this document. Um, but my whole um, position is, and I, I will... Um, come back to this. Really um, a fantastic way um, to come about and, and sort of like share our work in one space and actually attach it specifically um, to this document. So uh, I'm coming back. Um, yeah. And so I want to think about um, Gabby course brings um, it's definitely not like um, a forum activity where basically um, the, the key thing to me is it's it's the context of the content you're talking about. So it makes a lot of sense to have discussions. Um, you know, if you're having you know if, if you're having a discussion or even commenting on a, a web post, you have to talk about something that's very specific in a general sense, and to be able to attach information to the thing you're talking about is really important and, and powerful. And so, um, is hypothesis GDPR compliant? I'm not an expert, but um, I certainly can think about um, maybe some people here uh, would have an answer to Sarah's question. Um, I would, well, I, I can't hesitate to say what I could speak for the company because I'm not really with uh, the company. Um, yeah, i uh, just like to see the comments um, coming on to the here. Um, but the main thing is that um, what um, we want to come back to. Oh, here, I've been terrible, terrible teacher here. Antonio has had his hand up for a while. Can I help you, Antonio? Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. I found my way now. Thank you. Sorry, it's a legacy hand. I found my, okay. my way through it. <laughs> okay. I, I, just, I just managed to my first ever annotation. Yeah, that's good. It's it's really not that difficult. And that's, that's the great thing is that once you've done this annotation and once you've been able to show someone how to do it, um, they're able to um, pretty easily, it doesn't, you know, it's not a steep learning curve. The um, little bit of like, you know, when you're actually doing the editing, you can actually see what's being generated as a markdown, but you can you can see it as a preview. Um, a bunch of the um, Alan. media. Um, Alan. So if you put a link into YouTube, it embeds automatically. Yes. No, I'm just thinking that my question yes. before, sorry, I'm going to give my camera. My question before was about um, how to annotate from scratch a page because I went I, I went a bit too far I was busy doing something else I'm at home and uh, <laughs> I went too far I went too far and I went to the declaration itself and I clicked yeah. on yeah. the extension in Chrome but nothing happened yeah and then I realized that there was a link 
that took me to the stuff and now I am annotating it. But how can yes. I, can people just go and create annotations by clicking on the annotation extension on the right when it says it's active, you know, annotation is active. Can you start from there somehow or not? <coughs> Oh, yes. And so if you actually went to the original UNESCO document and um, let's see, I should actually do a demo and I can show you how it would work. So I'm going to screen share and, uh, you know, I always like it when someone asks you something that you hadn't planned to do because that's what we should be prepared to do. So I'm going to come uh, back to and avoid the inception here. Um, I'm going to find my link to the uh, full uh, UNESCO uh, recommendation. And, uh, and so uh, this is a big document. And so we actually had explored um, looking at um, uh, annotating the UNESCO document itself. But um, the way they have it set up, it actually has the five languages um, built into one. And you can see. Um, mine is not even uh, there. It's finally coming up. So, um, so in this case, um, we don't have hypothesis available. So, yeah. go to the I, hypothesis yeah. site. There's a I couple of uh, ways you can um, create yeah. annotation. So, if if you have, yeah, if you have um, the um, browser extension, so I can just click this, and I can bring this up. Um, and I can annotate here, and so yeah. I can bring this up. Um, I don't think there's any, there's, an, there's no, no one has annotated this document. Um, so what we have done is um, we imported um, this into Pressbooks um, because it, it actually just makes it a little bit easier um, to um, separate uh, them into chapters. So um, we have the uh, French version as a separate chapter here, and also that hypothesis is always enabled um, within um, within this Pressbooks version. Um, mm -hmm. And you can say, well, there might be a problem because if people go to annotate the UNESCO one, you know, the annotations aren't synchronized. Um, there are ways you can synchronize things across document. It gets into some really hairy technical stuff. But the, the last thing I want to let you know is um, the other way you can do this because um, you know, I've done this with students. Sometimes you have to get them to install a browser extension, and then you have to like get them to know how to use the browser extension. There's a, there's a bunch of steps there. So there there is um, a um, a service from Hypothesis um, that allows you to to create a link um, that you can. Um, you now I think it's it's via dot. So here's the perils of Alan's live demos. Um, so more or less, if you have a web page that you want um, your um, your particular student, so I could come in and I could say like, um, I want people to annotate uh, the help page uh, for the OER conference. And so I can come over to Hypothesis here and I can create, I can put in a URL and it creates, um, a link so it creates this kind of funky link that you could share with your students or your work colleagues or people you're doing a project with to say like this is where we're annotating and so it saves people the hassle of having to deal with the browser extension um, and so this is a sort of a it's a funny looking link because it has this uh, url in front of it and then the, the url for the document that you're annotating but um, I did this quite a lot when I was teaching, um, for examples, where I wanted my students to annotate one particular um, document. Antonio has okay, his hand so raised. You had your first annotation. Pretty topical. Oh, yeah, you have the link to it. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, multitasking with the screen. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I've uh, managed to um, share. You know, I've shared in the talk. Yeah, I shared a recommendation if anybody wants to comment yep. on it. That's that's quite excellent. And um, you see, it's very easy to share the link. Um, 
mainly I'm just hoping like, you know, as I'm like looking through the conference sessions going on here and I, I had a couple, you know, there's many works, you know, uh, Catherine Cronin's uh, uh, talk uh, yesterday on the Just Knowledge Project definitely applies to this area. Um, there's definitely lots of GoGN research going on that are looking at issues of um, equity and inclusion um, in, in this. And so um, what I've been kind of hoping is that you know, people are at this conference and um, I'm encouraging this um, as an activity um, during our uh, conference in Nantes, um, which OE Global is putting on. I'm going to be remote because um, I can't travel right now, um, but we're sort of want to create ways for people to participate. And some of the ways you can do that is through this adaptation activity. So you can be looking at a presentation. You can watch one that might be streamed. You can see a reference that someone makes and we could sort of use it almost as a, like a conference, you know, note taking um, activity. Um, but, you know, mainly it's the idea that um, to me in this recommendation are a lot of like, you know, examples of things that we should be doing or that we are doing. And if we had a lot of gathered activity, like putting examples of what implementation of some of these um, recommendation activities look like, um, that it would make the document that much better because then it's not just this high level document, it's sort of a, a living um, document that has uh, examples. And so um, I've been trying to get um, people engaged with this. Um, <laughs> It's been a little bit uphill um, <coughs> trying to get some attention uh, on doing this. And um, yeah, you have to be engaged enough with this to say like, hey, I'm going to remember to go annotate when I see things. But, you know, as I'm going through when that people are sharing um, in my email or in social media, um, it jumps out to me. It says like, wow, this is something that really should be attached um, to the OER recommendation. Um, but you know the the bigger um, outcome, you know, and I see it in the comments here, is that um, people see what I'm trying to do with annotation, and they can be also thinking like, these are some of the ways that I can think of using it um, in my projects or the classes that that I'm teaching. And so, to me, the idea that um, you can actually uh, participate as a group and um, add information or meaning to any public web address is incredibly useful. It's like so many, got so many possibilities. So that's my spiel. I, I hope again, um, people might have some interest um, in uh, participating or uh, getting some um, activity around this. Uh, I've been bothering all my friends and colleagues. This is um, the main uh, press book where we have all this annotation activity going on. Um, there's a little bit of explanation and kind of a recap of some of the how-tos, but the main part is um, that the recommendation is there in the five languages, um, although um, I still have some work to do uh, with the Arabic um, because of some of the way the document's formatted and we're trying to get that in action, um, but we want people to be able to annotate if they want in the in French um, or Spanish or um, Chinese um, into um, the OER recommendation of their, uh, that is most appealing to them. So um, with that, that's kind of, I maybe have blabbed a bit too long, but I wanted to give a chance um, to share what we're trying to do um, to maybe encourage uh, some of you folks to get out there and annotate as well. Um, so I will do some pause here and check the chats and things. Yeah, um, Alan, can I say something? Please. <laughs> yeah, no, I managed now to get annotate, uh, annotating random web pages, not just the web page of uh, yeah. the OER press book, poop, etc. yeah? And uh, it's, yeah. it's interesting to see that the original official document of uh, the declaration doesn't have any actual annotations itself. It's, no. You see what I mean? That nobody has gone to the original source to annotate. Do you think we yeah, should be we, um, annotating the original one instead of this one? Yeah. Um, it really doesn't matter. Like. 
sometimes people get like they want to make sure it's like pure and it's got all the same annotations um, it can get messy and so one, one of the things is like wherever we're annotating it could pile up and um, it, it could be um, uh, uh, like it could be like, oh my god there's like a thousand annotations it's almost unreadable and I've heard from some teachers that's what happens to the document well, you can yeah. actually create another con you know version of it and start over again so I don't think it matters as much um, you know, the fact that no one has annotated it says to me, well, like no one has really thought about it. I don't know. Um, but, uh, the reason I, and I did think about trying to annotate the original version <laughs> because that seemed more proper. It's UNESCO's document. Um, but because of the way it's structured, it's a large cumbersome. It takes a long time to load. And if you're annotating in the Spanish section, you're actually just 10 pages down from the other one. Um, so it gets to be. It was kind of unwieldy and it didn't wasn't as easy to navigate and it occurred to me um, from some other projects that having it in press books um, and we could have done this on a wordpress site there's lots of ways to set this up but the fact that you can enable annotation to be available when anyone goes to the document um, seemed to make sense um, antonio i don't you know as long as people annotate it would make sense um, you know um, you know, and you know, and the, you know, it is certainly fitting that it happens at UNESCO, and um, we we've we've let them know we're doing this. Um, and actually, if anybody has any connections, I've been trying to let them know a long time that on their um, main page for the recommendation, the link for Chinese goes to Arabic, and the link for Arabic goes to Chinese. And I don't have any contacts, um, and so um, that, that's something that that probably needs to be fixed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alan, Thank you. you. Thank Sorry, I did not raise my hand, but I'm just gonna talk. Alan, you mean contacts at, at UNESCO? Please. Yeah. We can fix that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I should have just called you, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 uh, it's been a long, long time uh, when uh, when I was working for the UN, but. Um, yeah, I think I think there are a few contexts remained, and uh, uh, it's definitely two different languages. And it was very, uh, I was very yeah. emotional to see the the Arabic page uh, up saying that uh, the report is um, in development, um, and I hope uh, that will be soon available. <laughs> well, there was there was um, we did a lot of effort, and there was something that made it. Um, not even feasible to copy and paste from the PDF. Um, I did some digging and I could see in the UNESCO version, there was somewhere um, a Word document that it was based upon, but um, I don't know how to find that that document. So, um, and so I just haven't, um, you know, we got to get back to reaching out to some contacts. Um, we have mm. a few um, who might be able to help us out to, um, uh, to, to, to translate that because you have to copy it into the, the press books interface sure. and um, I definitely want to change or mess up the understanding of it um, in Arabic especially because um, my only ability to sort of see what I'm doing is to run it through Google Translate which is not suitable um, yeah. but yeah because the document's structured it's pretty easy to you know pull one item from a list you know put it into press books go and that's mm. that's how we had to do some of the other ones yeah, please do um, let me know. Yeah, if, if um, I can I'll help reach out. If... Okay. <laughs> I will definitely call. Well, I, chance, I have a chance to catch up. Yeah, I have a, a, another question. We talked about the messiness that can be reached through so many annotations. Do you think that, and this is something that um, the teachers we um, advise to, you know, go through. A, um, an experiment with a social annotation. Do you think that there is a way to um, moderate the messiness or um, allow for as many annotations as, as, as possible, but then also um, maybe prepare the teachers to say at a certain point, you gotta be, you know, coming back to, to the, as if it were a conversation, right? And and try to moderate that, so we go away from this overwhelming feeling. There's so much going on. To there is much going on, but it's useful and 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 kind of trying to to facilitate that. Or do you think that the nature 
itself of annotation should not be moderated because um, the messiness is tricky, right? Yeah. Well, because of the way the platform, there's actually no way that you can sort of, I mean, there might be some, some ways or with some other platforms, uh, but you know, it's, it's an open platform. So you don't have the ability really um, to moderate what is, is done. Um, I mean, there is sort of a, you know, if something's inappropriate, you can flag it and, and report it, um, which is an issue. Um, I wish I had the problem where I had too much annotation. I haven't really run into that um, yet. And so, um, you know, me personally, the way I teach, I don't think it's a problem. Like, and um, if you have that much activity going on, um, you know, I, I have had some conversations with, with Ramey about this. And so, you know, one of the things you can do is like, um, you know, think of it as just raw conversation. And so one thing you do, if the annotation gets messy, you want people to synthesize it somehow and sort of like, you know, um, you know, extract the meaning from uh, all this kind of messy conversation. And it's, you know, it's the same thing with discussion forums, like they, they can get messy too. So you can lose the thread and, and what, what the focus is. Um, so I, I don't think it's, um, you know, a real super problem. Um, and there are ways what, and I mentioned what we're doing is, um, is public, meaning that anybody can annotate. You can set up private groups, um, which means that when you come into, um, into the annotation screen, you can toggle from doing public annotation and you can create a, a private group. Yes, Sarah. Um, so if you just want it for a course, um, you can sort of have your students say, make sure all your annotations are within, you know, the um, you know ENG five three two course group, um, and for people you know, Hypothesis does offer services um, where you can have your um, your learning management system or your VLE um, connect with Hypothesis, where that is done automatically. And so it's a little bit of a different approach, but um, certainly some of the learning management systems um, can be arranged. So if you're in a course. And you have an assignment exercise; it's automatically um, within group. Um, there's some other issues that happen with that, but that can sort of um, ease um, so, some of the issue. Yeah, yeah. The the Moodle plugin; the, those things always come with a cost when you don't do the integration. Um, so um, yeah, I've tried. I've done some with a group um, because sometimes people don't um, have public annotation, or if you're doing um, a specific class discussion, maybe you want to, you know, limit the participation. I think that's certainly a way to go. And it's just a habit that you get into if you're doing um, an annotation assignment and to say, make sure you, you know, your annotations are in the group. Um, and, and that can, that can help, you know, you know, you could have an activity where you put people, maybe you create like five working groups and you have students work in the groups and they do their annotations um, within, um, the the groups um, to do their their activity um, so it kind of depends more about the nature of the activity um, that you're, you're uh, that you're trying to do but there's really not the ability like um, like when you moderate comments or things like that to be in control of the <coughs> document to approve or to delete things and so yeah that that can be a downside um, thank, thank you thank you Uh, Great to see you. Thank you. No, Alan, I was um, I was thinking that um, this is great. Um, the fact that you can have the private groups and the fact that you can create a group every year, because obviously the annotations will be only visible to that private group. So private group. So if I have an article that my students have to read, we have this problem in arts and humanities that the students read less. And they dedicate less time to reading as well and reading is seen as boring and we have academic articles mm. we have a literary text that they can read and usually they are online so increasing the um the social aspect uh, and interaction and the you know learning from others uh when it comes to facing these articles is is important so effectively what i could do is to create a group every year because mm. otherwise a private group because otherwise the annotations of previous years would be getting messier and messier 
and everybody would be, which doesn't mean that at some point I cannot make public the annotations of previous years. It's bloody interesting, all for the sake of comparison. So now the, there is a there is a cost associated to to that, of course, if you want to have your students to engage, not necessarily through having uh, Moodle groups. You know, I'm thinking about one of my classes in which I have 25 students. You know, I would go there and create five groups. Um, that would have a cost, wouldn't it? The a cost in terms of financial, or just cost of like overhead of your um, way to management. No, 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 no. A cost meaning the the um, that the account is free if I am doing things like this with you now, but that, that obviously there is a pay version. Yeah. Uh, that's only for integrating with your um, your VLE or your LMS. Um, there is no cost in Hypothesis to create as many private groups as you need for your courses. Um, it, it's more a matter of you know having your students understand um, that you know they need to be selecting their group first before they do their annotation. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I people will mess I... up and they. Yeah, I agree with what Leo was saying about paying good people for doing good things. So uh, the sustainability of the tool relies obviously on the on the plugins and other things that are being um, produced. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. I'm not I'm not familiar with, with Elevate, and again, this is certainly not the only annotation uh, platform out there. And so it, it's it, it's you know great to see. I mean, there's you know. And, and you can think about some of the tools that allow you to, you know, put comments um, as you're watching um, a YouTube video or um, SoundCloud's ability to put comments um, right in the moment of a of a soundtrack um, as a form of, of annotation. And um, annotating images is, is an incredibly useful tool um, in, in many places. So, um, um, but yeah, Hypothesis has a lot going for it um, because of their commitment. Um, when you, for those who care, uh, if you're doing public annotation, uh, by default, any annotation is um, licensed with a, a CC0 um, license. There's a long convoluted reason I think about it, but um, I don't really think about like who's going to reuse my annotation um, without my permission. But um, it's interesting that they've included that um, as part of their platform. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. So um, I hope you have a great conference. Uh, tell other people and uh, tell them to, to fill up um, that document with yellow notes, please. Thank you, Alan. Perfectly on time as well. What a fantastic session. Um, so wonderful as well to have so many of you joining in and really getting stuck in. It's been great to great to observe. And I've uh, got yet another thing I can go and play with now. I'm learning lots of new tools to go and play with. So a huge thank you to Alan for getting up so unbelievably early um, to present and being so awake and engaged in his session despite the early morning. Uh, I'll stop the recording now. Um, and I think we have a uh, lunch break now. Um, so I think we start again, let me just check, at yeah, one o'clock. So hopefully see you all again then. Thank you once again, Alan, and I'll give you a, a sort of online clap. So thank you very much. <laughs>